Hi everybody, I'm Simon. Welcome to this new series of Simon's Tales. In this series we're going to cover the time I was a manager and setting up my first beer bar in Pattaya, Thailand. Roll those intros. Hi everyone, so for those of you who want the backstory on this, I will link at the end of the video for the last uh, Solomon's Tales video, which will explain a bit of the backstory for you. Now, I found myself back in 2001 in Patea. I've been offered a job. The boss, Sue, and her husband, and we're going to call him P, because I think that was his name, but I can't remember. <laughs> He was Chinese Thai and I think she was also possibly Chinese Thai. They had businesses already. They had a money, uh, he looked after a money lending business. She looked after a soap massage and some real estates, which later on I got to see some of them. The offer was on the table for the job and for me to manage this new uh, venture with them, the beer bar. And the bar is in Soy BJ off Walking Street in Patea. Uh, bit of a dark alley, it's a dead end road and it was as I said before a formerly a club that had been shut down. So beginning of the week it was a Monday or a Tuesday morning I'd come down from my room in Soy 4 downstairs to the sofa massage and gone in and Sue's there and we decided to have a meeting to sort out going forward. Now one of the subjects, she asked me what I wanted, anything else I needed, and what my thoughts were. I came up uh, with the idea about work permits and visas, because at, the, at that time it was acceptable to get have a 30 day tourist visa, get an extension at the local immigration in Patea, for either 15 or 30 days, I can't remember, and then I had to do border runs, visa runs keep going out the country, walk out the country, stamp out, stamp back in, get another 30 day tourist visa. So I brought this uh, up with her and um, you can get work permits as a bar owner, I believe bar manager as well. Now this is quite a big subject, work permits with a lot of you. When I moved to Thailand in 60 days, T minus 60 days, I will at some point drop down to Hua Hin to a friend of mine's bar and he has got work permits. Uh, he has a work permit for his bar. So I will go through the process with him and you later on. So she said she would look into it uh, about the visa and work permits. However, I wanted a bit of time off. You don't want to be a bar manager seven days a week like Chris was doing at that go-go bar. He was working every afternoon, every night. And that was in my mind. So I mentioned to her that I will need some time off, I don't want to work too much, and she was fine. She said, we'll sort all that out nearer the time when we get started. Now, she said that builders are going to go in, they're going to put new windows in the front of this uh, bar, and decorators are going to change some of the looks, going to change the sound system, the lighting system. She was going to put a computer in uh, for the sound system in the DJ sort of pedestal area. She mentioned about pool table and what other things we would need and she also mentioned that the room above the left hand side of the bar where the pool table would be is a big room and she would turn that into an office for herself and me. Then on the other side is these short time rooms which we'll get into later and so we sat down and had a meeting had a chat and then she said I would need to get a mamasan. Now I had no idea how to get a Mamasan. I'd never run a bar before. Yes, I'd spoke to quite a few Mamasans going around different bars in Patea. I didn't know how I'd get one. And uh, also to get girls. Now, quite often a Mamasan in a bar in Patea and the girls, they month by month move about quite a bit. They get bored in the bars they're in or someone upsets them and quite often the Mama San will have a group of girls and when she goes they'll go with her and that can happen a mass walkout of staff 
Um, so getting a good mama son who's got a group of girls available would be the perfect scenario. But finding that mama son, that's a hard job. And getting girls. The bar tucked down an alleyway in Soy BJ off Walking Street. It's going to be hard to get customers in there. And that was one of my early worries. What you see in Walking Street is a group of girls with placards and banners um, asking you to go to their bar. And I envisage having to have five or ten girls up in Walking Street dragging customers down. So that was in my mind. There was also the mention in the meeting of a, uh, a theme for the bar. And in Walking Street in those days there was quite a lot of go-go bars and most of the beer bars, there was a few big ones, were sort of cafe restaurant beer bars but then there was complexes of small beer bars. Um, with the idea of pool table and my love for pool and uh, snooker and, and sports as well back in those days I said let's have a sports bar let's get a couple of big screen TVs and it's a lot of, a lot of people pick this type of bar um, as opposed to a sort of a bar that is orientated all around girls and services and things so we, we decided to go with that we pretty quickly came up with the name of Soy BJ Fun Bar. Um, just the name of the Soy BJ causes a, a smirk on a lot of people's minds. But it was named after a guy, uh, BJ. And I, th I think if you do a search online you'll find a bit of detail about him. But he did have a bar right on the corner of Walking Street or just a couple of feet in. So the meeting went well, rough ideas done. The builders were going to take a week or two and Sue mentioned after those couple of weeks for me to move down to the bar and then she'd supply a motorcycle so then I would be rent free and have a bike, company bike. Excellent. She then surprised me by turning around and saying right I'll start your salary from now. Well that's like a couple of weeks <laughs> holiday pay <laughs> before even start but she said you know you're going to have to try and find a mama Sam. That was great. So I was on a salary, 20,000 baht, bingo. I suddenly had a new focus uh, in life. I'd achieved what I thought was the dream of living in Thailand and working. So brilliant. I was on cloud nine, over the moon. But I also had a bit of a life there. I mean, Ninga disappeared off with a guy and still no news from her. After the meeting, I'd said fine, right, okay, and I was off for a late breakfast. And I went off second row where it was and had breakfast. While sitting there, I thought, I need some help. I cannot, I'm, I'm not easily going to be able to find a mama son. It means going around every bar and trying to poach their mama son. I mean, that's not good. How would you be perceived by the bar owners and managers if you're walking in the, trying to pinch their staff? Not good. And I didn't know how to go about it. Frozen. On my mind I thought, right. And I jumped on the phone. I hadn't heard much from her. And I gave her a call. Luckily she answered. And I said to Frozen, told her the situation and what's happening. And she was really excited about it. She said that she was back a couple of days later um, and she'll have a think to see if she could help. Well, everything in Thailand goes on a slow pace so you don't rush around to do stuff and I didn't. For that next couple of days I visited Chris and a few friends around that got bars asking them about how to get a mama son etc. And a lot of them couldn't really help. There was always in the cafes, uh, the Thai food um, cafes and street stalls where all the girls at the bars work. In my mind that was the place to go, is go there and start asking around and maybe even get some leaflets made up saying new bar opening, job. I hadn't discussed with Sue about salary for girls and Mama San 
and I'd forgotten all about it. So in those couple of days, I went back and got hold of Sue and sat down and said to her, how do we work out salaries and things for girls? Now a lot of the bars, um, again, it's probably changed a bit over the last 15 years, but in those days, back in 2001, a girl working in a beer bar would earn a basic salary of 2,000 to 3,000 bars a month. They would make their money, their salaries, their income from lady drinks. A customer would come in, the girl would come up, a service girl or a girl working in the bar, chat to the customer and the customer would buy them a drink and they would get a commission of about 20 baht for every lady drink they had. Now in the bars, when you buy a girl a lady drink, the price of that drink is higher than a standard drink and that allows for the commission to be paid to the girls. So a good service girl working in a busy bar could be getting 10, 15, 20 lady drinks a day and that adds up over a month. They also uh, supplement their income by becoming tour guides or instructors, aerobics instructors. Customers would pay a fee to the bar known as the bar fine um, to take that girl out of employment for the day and go off as their tour guide or whatever and the the girls made the money that way as well so it all added up with a basic wage bar fines and lady drinks so a salary sue said for anywhere in walking street and off walking street the salaries were higher than in roads way off maybe soy bacow soy lenki all around away from the beach so she came up with the idea we'd pay 4,000 baht, I believe it was 4,000 baht, basic salary for a girl, which was good. Then came the subject of a mamasan. Now, a good mamasan, if, if she brings loads of girls and she's good, can earn lots of money off the girls' kickbacks, commissions. And in that, 2001 was eight to 12,000 baht salary for a mamasan. So Sue said, look, we'll head for the lower figure but we can adjust it so between 8 and 12 so that gave me an idea of what sort of money I could offer for the right person and the Mama Sam would have to get on with Sue and would have to bring some girls so with that in mind the plan was set and I'd got an idea the builders moved in I had keys and I kept going up and down to the bar to see what happened it only took them a day and a half I believe to put a big front window in the one section and there was a team in there they'd ripped all the lights out within a, within the first week they'd ripped all the lights out and put um, standard pendant lights in they'd ripped the sound system out and they were going all over the place doing different tweaks and decorating this club and all the rooms were like a mosaic tile on the wall it was quite sort of moroccan feel and they couldn't really decorate the walls because they were all covered in these little tiles so they had to use clever lighting and a subtle uh, paint on different areas and the ceiling to try and brighten the place up uh, but they were full steam ahead so that's part one in the next one frozen arrives and we'll cover what happens next this first period Simon myself I had no girlfriend uh, at all and uh, hadn't seen frozen Ning or yeah very quiet but my head was getting into the bar setting that up so I didn't really, wasn't really fussed about going out, getting drunk and finding a girlfriend. Frozen returns on the next one. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.